Hey there and welcome back to Two Real Chicks. I'm Carla. Have you ever seen someone online or on the street or on YouTube and their foundation just looks flawless? They look like a porcelain doll and you kind of look at yourself and go, eh. Not only do we want a perfect flawless foundation finish to our face, but we also want it to last all day or all night depending on what we're doing. So today I'm going to show you my top tricks and tips to make your foundation go on smoothly and flawlessly and to make it last hours and hours and hours. The very first thing that I do is start with a clean, freshly washed face. You wouldn't paint dirty walls, you wouldn't paint a picture on a dirty canvas, so your face needs to be freshly washed and cleaned as well, so that makeup can really get in there and meld with the skin. A clean face is going to help it last longer and look more flawless. Next, moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Skin that is very well moisturized, especially under the eyes helps give the makeup something to stick to. It helps it meld with your skin, become one with your skin, and it also evens it out so that you don't get a bunch of funky looking patches in your foundation. It helps it go on much more flawlessly and much more evenly. Now this is something I only started doing in the past year and it has made a huge difference in how my makeup goes on and how long it lasts. That is a primer. There are so many different primer formulations, whether you need a color correcting one, a hydrating one, or one like I like to use, a silicone pore minimizing one. The primer is such an important step in the makeup application because it does just what it says. It primes the skin. And it gets it ready for makeup. It gets it ready for the makeup to be applied and to stick to it better. It's almost like the glue between your skin and your foundation. Primer smooths out pores, wrinkles, any uneven patches that you may have, and it helps the makeup go on much more smoothly. Primer also plays a very important role in making your foundation last longer and keeping it from breaking up. You know how it'll kind of either oxidize and turn orange, or it will just break up and start to dissipate, and that's not a look we want. Use good tools to apply your makeup. I alternate back and forth between a sponge and between a brush. I like the kind of brush with this kind of short, stubby, some call it a stippling brush, I think. Short, flat bristles work really, really well on foundation. Sometimes it depends on the foundation, how it goes on better with maybe a sponge or with a brush, just trial and error. You know, there really is a lot of trial and error in this. So for me, I just kind of play around and see whether the brush or the sponge is gonna work best with the particular foundation that I'm applying for the day. If you use a brush, you wanna make sure it's clean. If you use a sponge, particularly a beauty blender, you wanna make sure that it's damp, completely saturated, and then squeeze out all the excess water so just that it's damp that's what we want we don't want it wet we want it damp a very important part of getting flawless foundation and a flawless face and making it last all day is to use good foundation your definition of good foundation may not be mine so just play around and figure out what works best for your skin a good foundation makes a huge difference in the application in how long it lasts and in the color, because the last thing we want is halfway through the day or the night, it turning orange on us. So make sure that you have a good color match and that you have a formula that works very well with your skin. And that doesn't mean it has to be expensive. One of my favorite foundations right now is $6. And then I have $60 foundations too. It just depends on how it plays with your face. So do some trial and error. Find your favorite foundation. Today I am going to use NARS All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation. I'm mixing two shades. I'm mixing number one, light one in Siberia, and light five in Fiji. Pump it or pour it on the back of your hand. So when I'm mixing two shades, I just blend them together. Now I'm going to dot this on my face, but I'm not going to blend it with my fingers. Blending with your fingers leaves fingerprints. It leaves streaks. So you always want to use a good tool. So first I'm just going to go in and dot. You want to apply it in the areas where you need the most coverage. For me, that's around 
the cheeks, the nose, the chin, and the forehead. And once I've dotted it, I go to the back of my hand and I take my sponge and I pick up any excess product. And then I just go in and start pouncing it out. Now I will tell you, for me, this is the most important step you can do. When I spend time on my foundation and really get it well blended, it lasts so much longer and looks so much prettier and sets so much better on the face. Now I realize sometimes time is an issue and we have to slap it on, but my biggest tip to you would be to really blend it in, work it in, so that it melds with your face, it becomes one with your skin. Spend some extra time just making sure that you get it in all those nooks and crannies, all those places that it can break up. You wanna bring it down your chin also, so that your neck and your face match. And just keep on pouncing, keep on working. To me, this is the number one most important step. I also take it over my eyes, over my eyelids, because I like to hide veins and discoloration that I have up there. I think as we get older, we have more of that. So I am just taking my time, working it into the hairline, going around my ears. And if you wear your hair up, it's especially important to get your ears. You don't want your foundation and then bright white ears sticking out. And getting it really good around that nose is really important. Use the pointy end of your sponge if you need to to do that. Because for me, that's one of the first places it will start to break up. Same with this little dent in the chin. Just working that around. Tap, tap, tap. Blend, blend, blend. I promise you, if you take the time to really work with that foundation, you will get better staying power much longer lasting power, better color payoff, and a smooth, flawless, perfect complexion. Now, depending on the type of foundation that you use, whether it's a light, medium, or full coverage, you may need to go back and add a little bit more. This is a little sheer, and I like more full coverage, but I love the finish of this foundation. So I'm gonna go in and add a second coat. For me, that really does not only make it last longer, but it gives it that flawless finish. So I'm just going to go back in the areas that I need more coverage. I'm not going to necessarily go all over the face, just in the areas where I really want perfection and staying power. And repeating the same method, tap, 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 blend, blend, blend. I don't think you can ever spend too much time blending. This is a crucial step. The blending process and the smoothing out process is absolutely critical to getting that perfect face, that perfect finish, that flawless look that we all want. And I promise you, if you do this with a $5 foundation, a $50 foundation, or a $150 foundation, you will get a beautiful finish. Take your time. Now, some people like to use their foundation as their concealer. I don't find that to work because as we get older, we generally get more darkness under our eyes and we need something lighter to brighten it up and cover it all up. Foundation is designed for the face. Concealer is designed for the under eye. So I think it's very important to use the two separate formulations. Now, while you want a concealer that's lighter than your foundation, you don't want them to mismatch. You don't want one to be cool and one to be warm toned. You don't want one to be pink and one to be yellow. And you don't want it so bright that there is a definite de demarcation line in between the two. That's where our blending is gonna come in handy again. So I'm just going to take my concealer, tap it on there. Taking the pointy end of my sponge, just going to blend it in. And this is another thing that where if you take your time, just like you did with that foundation, tapping it in, working it in, you will get much better staying power. You will get a better color payoff and it will meld seamlessly into your skin and give you that perfect finish that you're looking for. Time is really a very important thing when you're trying to get a flawless look. I'm just gently patting back and forth. And be sure, whether it's your foundation 
or your concealer that you get into these dark areas right there, right in there. Those will stand out like a mama jama once you put on your eye makeup and all the other makeup. If you have not properly covered right in there, those dark areas in there will just pop out. So get into those crevices that are in between the eye socket, in between the tear duct, and the bridge of your nose. Another thing that I do for perfect coverage is I do the bottom of my nose. I do my nostrils. Have you ever seen that? on yourself or somebody else where they did their entire face but then you could see where the foundation stopped take your sponge or your brush and get your nostrils the next important step is powder now you can use a pressed powder or a loose powder i typically use a loose one but that's just my personal preference and you want to powder the face because you want to make sure that it sets that it stays adhered to the skin that you don't have any transfer when you touch your face or put up your phone setting it with powder really does hold it in place and when we're looking for staying power and a flawless finish the last thing that we want our foundation to do is slip and slide around so locking it in place is very important i like to use a big fluffy brush i take my powder put some out in the cap swirl it around tap off the excess and I take my time powdering too because just as I have taken my time with my foundation I think getting the powder in the right spots and making sure that it's fully covered is very important so I typically tap it on first some might even call this a mini bake I am especially heavy-handed around the crevices of my nose around my chin and my forehead and don't worry I'm not gonna leave it this way take the powder all the way around I use a different setting powder for under my eye in fact I have a whole routine on how to keep your under eye concealer from creasing and wrinkling I will link that up above so that you can see all the steps that I use in that including the setting powder that I use in that I find that if I use the same setting powder that I use on my face that I get creases and wrinkles in my concealer and after I've gone to all this trouble the last thing we want is wrinkles under there that make us look 222 years old so now that I have spread it all the way around I am dusting it off so see it doesn't look cakey it doesn't look overly powdered what needs to stick will stick and any excess will just wipe away and the final crucial step to getting your foundation to look flawless and to get it to last all day or all night is a setting spray your powder does indeed set it but adding a setting spray on top really locks in that foundation locks in that makeup and makes it just stick a setting spray also takes away any excess powdery look that you may have take your setting spray hold it about six to twelve inches away from your face and just take a few spritzes there are different types of setting sprays some have a glowy finish some have a matte finish mist it about let it dry now go ahead and finish up the rest of your makeup and those are my top tricks and tips to make your foundation flawless and to make it last all day or all night this is what I do myself and the steps that I use. And I find when I really practice these steps, especially working that foundation for a good long time, they truly do work, at least for me. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more tricks and tips, give this video a big old thumbs up and let us know in the comments section what you'd like to see. Be sure also to subscribe and hit the little bell so that you never miss one of our videos. We'd love to hear your tricks and tips, and we'd also love to hear if you've tried any of these tricks or tips and how they work for you. I'm Carla from Two Real Chicks, and until next time, bye.